These are motivated sellers. They're dealing with the squatter. It's a drug house. It's a distressed property. It's a probate. It's an ARIA, whatever. We're dealing with a very motivated seller. And what does that motivated seller want to hear? Cash, cash, no contingencies, close in 15 days. So you have two choices, two choices. You're inherently wealthy and that you can fund all of your own transactions yourself, which fantastic, good for you. Or you need to have a good private money lender that you have a relationship with. They, those sellers that are motivated are not interested in terms. They're not interested in contingencies. And they're not interested in a lot of other hoops that they have to jump for. They want to see an offer from you that is basic in nature, very simplistic to understand, all cash, close in 15 days, no appraisal, no other contingencies, etc. And with that, you need to have two choices, cash on hand or a private money lender. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, also your host today. Well, I have an amazing guest that's going to be joining us. He has originated hundreds of millions of dollars in private money loans. He's the principal and the president of Zinc Financial and also the Zinc Income Fund. Now, founded back in 2007, Zinc Financial is a licensed lender, not a broker, but a licensed lender having originated and serviced almost close to $1 billion in loans, and check this out, with a loss ratio of less than one-eighth of a percent. His investors are very, very well protected. Well, the Zinc Income Fund was started in 2020, and that was a vehicle for the investors of Zinc to benefit from the Zinc Financials lending. Well, now, prior to Zinc, my guest held the position of president at one of the largest interior and exterior maintenance companies in the California Central Valley. Now, in just a moment, you're going to meet my special guest, Todd Piggott, right after this. Well, Todd, welcome to Raising Private Money. Jay, thank you for having me on your program today. It's absolutely a pleasure to be here, and I feel completely honored to be part of your program. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm so glad you are sharing some of your valuable time as a president of Zinc. So let's go ahead and dive in. You know, Absolutely. We, you know, as we were talking before the show started, Raising Private Money has got the podcast, Raising Private Money, has got two audiences that tune in here to the show. Part of our audience are real estate investors, seasoned real estate investors, brand new real estate investors that are looking for funding for their deals. They're looking to raise private money. And also we have other listeners that would like to invest in a fund and et cetera. But, you know, I tell my students and my followers all the time, establish as many relationships as you can with people and companies that can fund your real estate deals. I tell you one thing that drives me absolutely bonkers and crazy, Todd, is I hear these educators and gurus out there saying, oh, Real estate investor, just get the deal under contract. The money will show up. And I want to say, where? Is it like going to be, you know, falling out of the clouds somewhere? And of course, the answer is no. I say get the, I mean, the worst time to be looking for funding for a deal, in my opinion, Todd, is when somebody's got a, a deal under contract and now they're looking for the funding. Do you agree it's like a good idea to get, a st get your funding lined up first before you get those deals under contract? So that's a great, great observation. I call that the balloons and confetti syndrome. And what I mean by that is a lot of these uh, promoters out there, I call them self-promoters, will do the books and CDs and they call it the balloons and confetti syndrome that will often preach getting the property under contract, getting the contract, getting title and escrow, getting your appraiser, getting all these other things. But the last thing they touch upon is actually the most important thing in the entire equation. That is the capital source. The, the, the capital source is absolutely critical and paramount to any real estate transaction. It's more important than the other attributes that are in that transaction. Yes, you need a contractor. Yes, you need an appraiser. Yes, you need a pest control agency. 
Yes, you need a supplier like Home Depot and Lowe's and for office for selling agent and a buyer's agent and things of that nature. But to be very candid with you, filling those niches throughout that cycle is actually much easier. The hardest part is actually lining up the capital. So I actually view it as, as that being the absolute most important relationship by far is your capital provider and the relationship with that person. Thank you. You and I are on the same page and I know it from my own personal experience. I mean, I started investing in single family houses in eastern North Carolina in 2003. So, you know, we're talking over 20 years ago. And the only thing I knew to do, Todd, when I started out was rely on the local bank to fund my deals. That's all I knew. So everything was just hunky dory for the first six years. And then in 2009, I'm sure you may recall what happened. I Very lost, well. I lost my line of credit. and. Didn't have any way to fund my deals. And I had two houses under contract. My banker and I had a fantastic relationship until the global financial crisis comes along. And now I got a crisis, not being able to fund my deals. And so, I mean, the proof was in my experience. You got to have your capital source lined up first. And, and I tell you, Tom, I, was, I had a guest on my show here a few weeks ago. We were having this similar conversation that you and I are. And I said to my guest, I said, after we had this conversation, I said, would you please tell me why in the world an educator or a guru would say, just get the deal under contract. The money's going to show up when that's not the real world experience. And my guest said, shed so much light on it. My guest said the reason they would say that is because they're selling a course on how to get deals under contract. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So it's fascinating. It's fascinating to me that these promoters are out there charging anywhere from between five and thirty thousand uh, dollars to sell this course. And we can always tell when the course ends or the bus tour ends because then our phone starts to ring. It's actually quite sad. These individuals have spent thirty thousand dollars for this course and they bought the bus tour and they have a list. Of, of, the, of the appraisers and a list of houses and a list of real estate agents and selling agents and buying agents. And there's a table there with contractors lined up, but nowhere in the process is the capital part. And so then they call us and they're all excited. They just got off the bus and they, they're, they're happy and they have the balloons and the confetti and they have the new CD. And here they are calling us and they expect us to drop $400,000 or $300,000 on a whim. And candidly, our relationship is the most important relationship of that entire thing. Spending the $30,000 on the bus tour with the balloons and confetti and getting the free CD is not, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I'm not a big fan of those teachings and I'm not a big fan of that following. Uh, I, I, I feel that uh, good, good, solid experience in the industry, maybe working for somebody or, or finding a good wholesaler or finding a good capital provider and working with somebody is by far a much better educational experience. Than, than signing up for a three-day bus tour. I apologize for being so profound on that statement, but it saddens me to get these calls from these people that spend uh, their last little bit of money on this tour, only to find out that they really didn't get too much from that, and their experience level from that is obviously ill-fated. So uh, yeah. that's my position, and that's my, uh, that's my opinion on that. Well, and it's not just your opinion. It's your experience. Absolutely. <laughs> it's your experience. And, you know, that's why I preach all the time. The money comes first. That should be the first focus. You know, I'm just not interested in going out, marketing for deals, getting deals under contract. And I have no idea how in the world that I'm going to fund that deal. And, you know, I've got a lot of experience on what we call terms deals, you know, buying houses subject to the existing note, creative financing. But I've learned after reviewing thousands and thousands of property lead sheets over the years that only 13 percent of all those for sale by owners will sell to me creatively. What do the other 87 percent require? Right. All the money, you know, cash, cash. I, and that's the real world. I mean, that's, that's the, the real world. I mean, you know, I, I tell I tell my students and followers all the time, I say, look, they'll say, Jay, you know, I just don't need any hard money. I don't I don't need any private money. Uh, I just want to do the terms business. And I say, you know what? You can do that. That's your business decision. If you're happy with only 13 percent of the deals, if you're going to give up 87 percent of the other deals that are out there. And so 
I mean, I'm just so glad we're having this part of the conversation. The problem with that logic is that you limit your marketability and you limit your penetration into actually acquiring transactions. The bottom line is in fixing and flipping and wholesaling or buying distressed assets and then repositioning them to sell on the open market. These are motivated sellers. They're dealing with the squatter. It's a drug house. It's a distressed property. It's a probate. It's an REO, whatever. We're dealing with a very motivated seller. And what does that motivated seller want to hear? Cash. Cash. No contingencies, close in 15 days. So you have two choices, two choices. You're inherently wealthy and that you can fund all of your own transactions yourself, which fantastic, good for you. Or you need to have a good private money lender that you have a relationship with. They, those sellers that are motivated are not interested in terms. They're not interested in contingencies. And they're not interested in a lot of other hoops that they have to jump for. They want to see an offer from you that is basic in nature very simplistic to understand, all cash, close in 15 days, no appraisal, no other contingencies, et cetera. And with that, you need to have two choices, cash on hand or a private money lender. And even if you do have cash on hand, you're always better leveraging your own capital with a private money lender to expand your personal return on equity. So in either case, whether it's your own cash or a private money lender, you'll find that your return on equity is always going to be higher leveraging with a private money lender. Yeah. And you know what we're talking about here, Todd, <laughs> really emphasizes the point. The worst and most dangerous time, the worst time to be looking to raise capital for your deals is when you need it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. It's the worst the, the time. Call, the calls that we have that come in here, and, and, and again, they're slightly disheartening. Uh, I've already got my contractor. I've already got my selling agent. I've already got my title and escrow. I've already got my pest control agency. I've already got my roofer. Uh, by the way, I'm set to close in five days. Uh, I need money now. You know, we we are not last uh, to, to your relationship. We need to be first to your relationship. And that relationship is really, really critical. With, without a private money lender like ourselves or anybody really for that matter, uh, the rest don't even come into play. All of those other relationships that you have in the ultimate transaction are all fee-based. Those, those people are just getting a fee in order to perform for you. You have to have the capital to even march down uh, th th those other attributes in your transaction. So having a relationship with a private money lender up front and first is by far, it is by far your most important relationship. And with that, I do have some advice on that relationship. And I'll be going into that when, Jay, you, you, you want to discuss that. Sure. So um, we'll get to that in just a moment. Of so course. there are there are so there are multiple places to get funding from private lenders. Um, I get private money from individuals that I've taught my private lending program how they can earn high rates of return safely and securely. I got forty seven of those individuals that are um, loaning money, investing on our deals, either from their investment capital and or from their retirement accounts. So it's important to, if you're going to raise your own private capital, like I've done a lot of, I got about eight and a half million dollars that we moved from multiple project, to multiple project on single family houses in Eastern North Carolina. So, you know, there's advantages to that. You Correct. set the rule, you set the rules, you set the parameters. You're teaching people that you have influence with and you know, you raise private money that way. I also have relationships with uh, hard money lenders uh, such as Zinc on where, you know, I don't have to ever worry when that relationship's in place about calling up the private lender and oops, money's not there, right? That's one great big advantage of, of having a relationship with uh, Zinc is that you don't have to worry about the money not being there, right? When you're ready to fund a deal. So I want to talk about both. So in short, how I raise private money and, 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 and get people to do business the way that I teach them on loaning, loaning me money. Um, just for the sake of the podcast, I'm going to go ahead and offer out now for free to all of my listeners the way I raise private money from people in my warm market that I have some kind of association with. Uh, and I set the rules and you can set the rules. You can download that easy to read money guide at jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. That will get you on the fast track to attracting money from your own private lenders, individuals that you know. 
And in addition to that, and you and you sort of touched on this a second ago, Todd, I have people say, ask me all the time. They'll say, Jay, why, you know, you're making multiple million dollars a year, Jay. Why are you still using private money from individuals to fund your deals? And that's really a great, fair and honest question. And here's the answer. When I've got 20 projects going on simultaneously, 20 different single family houses, you know, I don't want to use my own money <laughs> to fund that. Talk about being real estate rich and cash poor if I got 20 projects going on, you know, simultaneously. And secondly, if I can get a higher rate of return on my own money, let's say what I'm going to be paying a private lender, why wouldn't I use my own cash? and my own liquidity, liquidity and other investments. So that's a common question I get. Very, very good question, but that's the answer. Todd, let's move on over to zinc. I want, yeah. I want our listeners to learn as much as possible here on the show about zinc. What is zinc financial? Uh, what does zinc financial do? Um, and why in the world was a real estate investor want to do business with zinc? Well, that's a that's a fair question. So uh, I will I will start uh, with a little bit of a preview on that uh, premise on this. Uh, I got my degree in construction and started uh, in the flipping business uh, back in the mid '90s, and I raised money privately as well, mostly from family and friends, and that worked quite well. The problem with during that period is social media was limited, internet as well as email was relatively limited, so that had kind of a finite grasp. Um, I started flipping back in the 90s and early 2000s. To date, I've flipped, fixed, flipped, and are bought a nearly $100 million in, in real estate. So we're pretty experienced in both buying, repositioning, and then selling assets. And I did a fair amount of that uh, with just family and friends and raising capital from family and friends. And that's how it started, especially back in the day, pre-internet pre-email and, and pre-social media. And so that worked pretty well. But then I found uh, during the early 2000s that I needed more capital to run my uh, business. And so at that time, I uh, started uh, forming Zinc. And Zinc is a, uh, a lender, private money lender. We are not a broker. Uh, we actually have our own cash on hand. And at that time, early 2000s, we, we started uh, lending our own money out to other entrepreneurs uh, in order to invest in real estate, whether it's fix and flip, buy and hold, or wholesaling. And that uh, took off extremely well. Uh, to date, we have funded over a billion dollars. We've uh, fixed and flipped ourselves over a hundred million dollars. Zinc is a private money lender. We get our money from our own mortgage fund. Our mortgage fund has a sub REIT feature it's registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. So investors can invest in our fund right here in California. They can enjoy returns of ex in excess of 8%. And then we take that capital from our fund and we lend it out to individual entrepreneurs that uh, fix and flip their own properties. We're located in about 36 states right now across the country. We do many of these loans on a monthly basis, many on a daily basis uh, to, to entrepreneurs who buy properties, fix them and flip them, or buy them, fix them up, and then rent them to hold them. So Zinc is a private money lender. Uh, we can help investors or real estate entrepreneurs or real estate investors with that acquisition of that distressed property or that rental property. So that's a little bit about my story and how, how I got to where I am today. Excellent. So uh, a real estate investor wants to explore and see, you know, what kind of lending criteria, what kind of experience that Zinc is looking for on who they loan money to as far as real estate investors. So what's the underwrite, underwriting criteria sort of look like? And I know every individual is different and there's no like black and white cookie cutter. But um, are you looking for, is Zinc Financial interested in doing business with new real estate investors? Does Zinc want to see some experience underneath the belt, et cetera? Uh, that's a great question. And thank you for posing that. Zinc works with actually beginners as well as advanced uh, real estate investors. We will take on a new real estate investor who's never done a transaction. And we will take on experienced investors that have more experience under their belt. 
We look at an experienced investor as an investor who has completed at least four transactions in the last 24 months. So Zinc will work with either uh, partner. There is a little bit stricter criteria for a beginner than an intermediate or advanced, but needless to say, we will work with both of them. We fund about 50% new and about 50% reoccurring investors on a monthly basis here. Our underwriting criteria is actually quite advanced, but for the sakes of today's brief discussion and a high level overview, some things that we look at that are very paramount to us. The first thing is the property. We're really interested in properties that are highly desirable and highly absorbed in the community for which they locate. What does that mean? We're looking for simple three twos or four twos, entry level housing below the median cost of housing and good solid communities. There's a McDonald's nearby, there's a Starbucks nearby. I call it my curbs and gutters theory. If it has a curb and it has a gutter, it's in a strong community, with, with streets and amenities nearby, and it has a typical front elevation that's consistent with the neighborhood. It's an entry-level home, believe the median cost of housing. That is a desirable commodity for us to lend on. We are not excited about rural, mountain, cabins, uh, condos up in the wilderness, de desert communities and things of this nature, or even large uh, swaths of land or large rural. These properties are, are much less desirable and, and much harder to sell. So the absorption rate for those properties are, are limited. So number one, we look at the collateral. Number two, we look at the borrower strongly. We do like for the borrower to have solid credit. That's kind of one of our pillars here. If a person is has extremely poor credit, their chance of working with us is gonna be very, very limited. So we do look at credit. We do look at their background check. We do look to make sure they have some liquidity in order to operate and fund the project on a continuing basis. And then we make sure that their the, the property that they're looking for is in alignment with our interests. So I'd look for some liquidity with the borrower, uh, a good solid credit, a good transparency and communication skills, good organizational skills. And then obviously they're looking for the collateral that would fit our guideline. So from a high level, those are kind of the things that we look for here at Zinc in order to partner with them on their next transaction. Well, one thing that you just brought out, Todd, is something that I advise all real estate investors that I work with. And that is if you're brand new or you're not brand new, doesn't matter. My advice through my own experience, because I've had some blood baths that I don't want my other you know, students and friends to experience. And I'm talking blood baths from 15, 16, 17 years ago. And that is keep the majority the high majority, like over 90% of your deals in what you said, Todd, in that, whatever you called it, the gutter and, 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 the, and the street appeal. Curves and gutters. gutters, curves and gutters. Curves and gutters. Keep the price point, the after repaired value of your houses that you're investing in, that you're wanting to flip or et cetera. Keep your focus on price points that are either median price or first time home buyer price points. And here's why. That's where the largest pool of buyers are. Correct. First time home buyers. That's where Correct. most of them are. And as you said, to use uh, your phrase, the absorption rate, that means can that thing sell? And is there a Correct. high demand for it that's going to sell right away? So your criteria there of keeping the price points of houses at that medium price and below, that's great advice for no matter who's listening. It's great advice. And, and here's the thing. Uh, I do a lot of research on metrics and analytics here at Zinc. We get our information from the General Services Administration and we pay for this. We don't get it from news outlets or the internet. And our information or metrics that we get from the General Service Administration, there is a historic shortage of housing widely across the country. And, and so entry-level housing, candidly, and entry-level multifamily, is highly desirable right now. We simply have a massive shortage of it around our country. We have only two to two and a half months supply, broadly speaking, across the country. So today is an excellent opportunity, although the news channels and some social media outlets might say something differently than myself, I get my data from the General Services Administration. We have a shortage of housing. We only have two to three months supply. Today is an excellent opportunity for real estate investors to enter the market and, and enter in, an, in a collateral space that is, uh, that is very desirable right now. And what is that space? 
entry level housing. Again, I want to stress below the median cost of housing and well designed communities, uh, well well groomed communities with lots of amenities. I call it my curves and gutter theories. I think this is just an excellent time to participate in this this avenue of wealth creating. Um, I've done very well in this. I've taken, as uh, Jay has mentioned, a lot of bloodbaths in this. I've lost a lot of money. I will tell you that most of my lessons were probably, uh, I don't know, 15 to 20 years ago. But a lot of those lessons I've learned are very, very painful when you lose money. And I've learned not to do uh, properties that are uh, uh, at the higher end of the market uh, because that can change swiftly. Your, mark, your buying pool is very small to properties that you might like but are rural or in, uh, in, in, in bad areas of town uh, or things like this. So I tend to look at the collateral as the number one thing. Location, location, location. Is it in an entry-level community, a desirable community, where a first-time buyer or a first-time family would want to move into a newly rehabbed home and start their lives? And so that's where we tend to focus. That's where we stay. That's where Zinc kind of stays in its lane because, candidly, over the multi decades that I've been doing this at this point, I've learned that uh, stepping outside of that has not proved uh, to be uh, very good for me. And uh, candidly, I've made a, <laughs> a lot of mistakes in this business. And so what I like to do today is uh, share those mistakes with our borrowers uh, and have them not repeat those same mistakes that I made. Because when they make a mistake, that's not only painful for them, but it's also painful for us because we're married to you throughout the transaction. So uh, being that we have fixed and flipped 100 million, lent a billion, we have a lot of experience in this space. And so we want to share that to hopefully prevent those fit pitfalls from landing on our, our borrowers. Excellent advice, Todd. So for everyone listening that would like to learn more about Zinc Financial, how do they do that, Todd? Hey, thank you for offering that up. Uh, you can visit us on the web at ZincFinancial.com. That's Z I. N is in Nancy, C is in Cat, zincfinancial.com, or you're always welcome to uh, give us a call here at the office. Uh, we're located here in California, 559-326-2509. Again, 559-326-2509. We're in California and currently about 37 uh, neighboring states, and we look forward to helping you, whether it's with advice or a question, or you're actually looking for a loan or just developing a relationship. Uh, we're, we're here to help with any of those avenues that you might have uh, have a need for. Excellent. That website, once again, uh, that for you to uh, check out Zinc Financial is www.zincfinancial.com. Todd, thank you so much for sharing your valuable time. Jay, I really appreciate you and your audience today for giving me an opportunity to share myself with them. These things are always joyful. I love this business. I'm very passionate about it. I think this is an excellent time to be in this space. And my congrats to everybody watching and to you as well. Uh, off to many successful years in our real estate investing community. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Well, there you have it, my friends. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. And if you found this valuable episode, this episode to be valuable, and I know you did, then do me a big favor. If you're listening on iTunes, be sure and follow. If you're listening on Spotify, be sure and follow. I love the five-star reviews uh, on iTunes and the other platforms. You may be watching on YouTube. If you are, be sure and ring that bell so you don't miss out on the upcoming amazing episodes of Raising Private Money. Be sure and subscribe while you're at it as well. So I'm Jay Connor, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. And I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.